guild works essentially you go to guild most people will see this list obviously depending on the rank depends on the access of this list there is a button around here sometimes it's meshed behind this screen uh, which allows you to level up your guild once you get to so much renown points that's the current renown points that you're on that's what you need for the next level you'd click the plus you'd level it up uh, the guild leader can change your mana, things like that. That shows the guild lists for the specific server you're on. That shows the alliance lists for the game. Internal affairs, that just shows like who's who's allowed which, you know what I mean? Like this is the deep management of the players. Unless you're weird, you're not really gonna use that. Group management. I'm not too sure what group management is for, but you could essentially put these into groups. And uh, is that one? Yeah, it's that one. And you could just segregate the groups. For example, if you have one group that's from another place, you could label all them so that everyone else in the guild knows where that group's come from when they log on. Guild skills. These cost a lot of money. Like you could easily spend. We've spent at least thirty, forty thousand, I think, on these. But these increase your gathering rates by a lot and your XP gain by a lot oh, they are insane if you can get gold easier I would try and upgrade as many of these as you could because 11.11 .11 in proficiency is insane amounts and there's all sorts of things one handed damage I think it was we were leveling pole arm up in real time and I was doing just off a standard light attack not moving which is not ideal for a power arm I was doing like four more damage it went up from like 26 to 30 I know it's not a lot but it adds up then you've got the guild tech this is where all the guild buildings come from the guild level which I discussed earlier is how you unlock these but at the same time you need a certain amount of renown guild activity points and you need gold these earlier ones aren't as expensive but like later on down the line for example the battering ram will cost nearly 5k gold that all needs to be put into a guild bank you can if you have the right access permissions you can buy skills and tech with your own coin but you need to have that coin on you otherwise you craft the workshop that's the first basic one it's quite large then you need the guild depot that one you can then all put coin into the guild bank easier these trade shops we've not really used that much there are trade shops in the neutral town on the map um, siege workshop that's obviously where you craft the mongonel flying fryer the ballista boundary marker that's where you that's your base's uh, new territory marker it creates a boundary where uh, quite a large boundary early game for a uh, decay timer it also allows you to set your offline time which is all based on paying tax per 20 hours of offline time up to 60 I believe so it can get quite expensive to pay for that offline timer um, simple watchtower that's basically a guard tower you, you, have to put, you do have to put a guard in and the ammo this staging station essentially the neutral river town that guy that sends you that can send you to other to uh, towns uh, for cash this is essentially the same thing but you can have it in your base so you can transfer in and out of servers in your base you can easily set up on multiple servers whether it be pvp and pve as long as you've got enough gold coming in you can go to the other server freely using that or if you have came from your original server but you didn't have the money at the time to drag your horses out or something you could put one of them down in your base and get the horses out when you do transfer for the first time it recommends you bring one of these with you but it's quite expensive to be honest and it's quite it's not a straight away unlock this is battlefield transport basically when somebody collects the seals and creates the uh, magistrate seal they become magistrate of the county and uh, other guilds can combat that and uh, contest it and go to war and this battlefield transporter is just a fast way of getting things to that battlefield as it is a set different battlefield 
and obviously as you level up your guild activity, your guild level, your personal rank as well and you can then buy coins to then get these things as it is on the normal benches you just hover over them the descriptions are a bit messed up but it will essentially tell you where you need to craft these things and what level you need to be, what gold you need to be to unlock them so on and so forth guild glory I haven't really messed around with this too much as I actually have no idea what it does or why it's in the game that's just a quick video on the uh, guild tab from what I've found in the last few days we have upgraded it so that you can have two members you can essentially pay there is a skill somewhere here that allows you yeah that will essentially allow you to have a uh, hundred members in your guild so it's not just a 20 member cap you can upgrade that to up to a hundred I, I believe it was worked out as but uh, that's just a quick look at the guild tree because obviously there's not a lot of videos on YouTube at the moment thank you if you like the video uh, please leave a like